So I'm ready to start building my template for my activity in Seesaw. I've already created my background and all of my movable pieces in Google Slides. So I have that open and I also have a window with Seesaw open. I've given my activity a name and I'm just going to go ahead and start working on the template now. So I click on Add Template and then I click on Drawing so that I get the drawing mat workspace. And I'm going to go back into my slides. I'm going to use my snipping tool and snip that template, that workspace that I want to create for them. And then I just use Control V to drop it there. I'm going to make it a little smaller because I'm going to put some direction reminders over here and I'm going to put my movable pieces over here. And so it doesn't have to be too big because of, of what we're doing. I like to put the direction reminders. I know that there's directions up here that they can click on. Um, I just found last year during remote learning that the kids did a whole lot better and the families did a whole lot better if I had all of the steps over here to the side. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm, I wanna lock that in place. So I'm gonna click on the three dots and I'm gonna say lock. And that means it can't be moved. So when the kids are working, they can't accidentally drag that background around. Now, if I need to move it again, I can unlock it. I can move it. I can get it where I want it. And then I can go back and I can lock it again. So now to start adding in my directions. Again, I just use the snipping tool. Remember the first step was I wanted them to look at the top and I wanted them to really decide. I wanted them to notice which side was gonna get the straight line uh, letters and which side was gonna get curved. So I'm gonna add that there. And again, I'm gonna lock it so that the kids can't move it. I want them to remember to use the moving tool. Um, I think that's always tricky. And so I just always put that reminder for them to use the move tool. Again, right there and lock. And then once they've moved everything, I want them to name the letters that they know. They may not know all of the letters, but it's really important to me to always give the kids an opportunity to use their voice in the activities. Um, so I just like to hear from them. And it, it's pretty, it's always interesting. So next they're going to use the microphone. And then last, they're going to click the green check. And so once I have those directions, and again, it doesn't have to be that big, it doesn't really matter, but I just want them to remember all of the steps for what they need to do. I wanna check it and just make sure nothing will move. Yep, everything's locked, so that's good. So then I just come in and I start doing the same thing with the letters that they're going to be sorting. So I just snip it pretty tight, Control V, and if I want, I can, I think it's going to be fine like this. I'm just going to start placing them over here onto the side. Now these I'm not going to lock because I want the kids to be able to move them. So these will not be locked. Um, one thing that sometimes happens when the kids are working is they accidentally resize something. So I just teach them how to use the undo button to fix that. And that's what you're going to do. You're just going to continue doing that, getting them a about the same size as close as you can and lining them up until you're all finished. Once you have all of those pieces in your activity, you're going to click the green check button. And now in your activity, you have your title and you have your template. You can open it up. You can go back and add more to it. You would just have to add that or tap that green check again. And then once you have your template made, you're probably ready to start typing in your directions.